time John lived the melancholy life of a man who temporarily, at least, was going through a personality crisis. For a time, he found himself right in the middle of rock and roll's fast lane. But they got through it, and John was starting over. He had a new record album recorded just two months ago. It was a good album that was receiving general public acceptance. John Lennon was back until an assassin ended the life of this fantastic talent, a man who changed the history of rock and roll. Perhaps the most tragic aspect of what's happened is that John Lennon was back. He was performing. He got the energy back. He had made an album. He is just about completing a second album. And this random act by, by this, uh, this assassin has ended what was to be a second coming of, of John Lennon. Geraldo, I know that you, uh, you ran into him. I mean, almost quite literally ran into him about six weeks ago. Do you have any sense of, of where his career was going? I mean, he had already jammed several careers into a, into a relatively brief lifetime. Absolutely. Uh, it was very clear from the way he and Yoko were responding, just generally, their mood, their buoyancy, that they were very optimistic about the future, that clearly they were bent on coming back to music, coming back to the professional life, coming back to the public life, making music again, going to the people with his latest creations. They were very, very up on the fact that, that John was back in the mainstream of rock and roll again. And Geraldo, you, you have spent a great deal of your life also covering the the entertainment beat and I'm uh, one of the one of the great hopes I think of, of people around the world was that someday the Beatles might get back together again is there any chance now do you think that uh, this tragic event will somehow bring the remaining three back together no I think that all this has done is to end what was a fond hope uh, held by tens of millions of people who loved the Beatles as a group, the fact that they would ever reunite. Uh, Paul and John were both dead set against it in, in private conversations with them. They told me that in public statements. They made it perfectly clear that that aspect of their lives uh, was over. Uh, now, tragically, uh, there is you know, an absolute irrevocable ending to what was one of the most important forces in modern music. Geraldo Rivera, thank you very much indeed. Right. Murray the K, a former New York disc jockey who was sometimes called the fifth Beatle and was master of ceremonies at many of their concerts in the United States, learned of John Lennon's death tonight in Los Angeles. He had this comment. It's a shame because uh, he did. It was the beginning of a new way. He, he felt free enough to finally come out of this self exile of really getting himself together as a person. I mean, he had split from Yoko, he had examined himself, and after he wanted to come back, I mean, it, it took a while and they did come back, and they made it work, and he felt free enough now to start to express himself artistically, which a lot of people were very happy about. He had a tremendous soul, and if there was something that was bothering you, or there was something in which you found yourself sort of uptight because of the situation. I, uh, my memories of him is he would always be the first one to really try to alleviate whatever problem you had have, and he would do that. Very few people uh, got a chance to, to uh, experience that, and that I, I 
remember. And uh, just like someone in my family or anything else, you after a while, you know, it's a shock. But I think that John Lennon would probably agree with a song that George Harrison wrote. And the line goes, life goes on within you and without you. This jockey, Murray the Cade. We'll have more on John Lennon's death later in this broadcast, and we'll be back in a moment with the latest on events in Poland. To recap the John Lennon story, it is now a little after 3 o'clock in the morning here on the East Coast, and roughly five hours ago, as John Lennon was emerging from his limousine, he was approached by a 25-year-old man who was later identified as Mark Chapman. Chapman asked Lennon, or simply said, Mr. Lennon, and then pulled out a gun and pumped five shots at point-blank range into John Lennon. The singer was uh, killed almost instantly, was pronounced bed, uh, dead upon arrival at Roosevelt Hospital in New York. All of this happened outside his apartment building, the Dakota House, which is on West 72nd Street in New York. Rita Sands is standing by live outside the, Dago uh, the Dakota House right now, and as you'll see in a moment, she is not alone. Rita? Ted, mourners began gathering here soon after the news of Lennon's death, and uh, there are easily now a thousand uh, mourners who come to pay tribute to him. Uh, at the beginning, it was a very solemn vigil. Many held candles, some put flowers. Unfortunately, we've lost the audio, but as you can see, there is a large crowd gathered now, or as you were able to see a moment ago, a crowd of mourners. Uh, it is, again, to point out, 3 o'clock in the morning here on the East Coast, and in New York, dozens, perhaps even hundreds of people have now gathered outside the Dakota, the Dakota House, which is where John Lennon lived when he was alive. But again, this evening, he was shot, allegedly, by a man who is now identified uh, as Mark Chapman, a 25-year-old drifter whom the police have described as something of a kook. Apparently they knew him. Uh, he allegedly shot Lennon as uh, Lennon came out of his limousine earlier this evening, about 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Now let's take a final look at the situation in Iran. It is now day 401 for the hostages in Iran. And for a change, the news from Tehran at least sounds hopeful. The Speaker of Iran's parliament, usually a hardliner on the hostage issue, said today the latest U.S. response comes closer to meeting Iran's demands. 